Well, we've been talking about the church. You know, we started off with a series called uh, A Healthy Church, and then we moved into uh, uh, A Strong Church, hallelujah, amen. And so today we're going to be talking about the church. What is the church, hallelujah, amen? What is the church, amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, what is the church? What is the church? Hallelujah, amen. Well, the church, you know, in Spanish, I'm going to give you a lesson right now in Spanish. The name in Spanish, church is called Iglesia. Say with me, Iglesia. La, la Iglesia, amen. It's the church, amen. It's quite interesting, but that's where we get the word ecclesia, a calling, a calling together, amen. Listen to what ecclesia means in the Hebrew, a gathering, a called out ones for a purpose. Now, listen to that, a called out ones for a purpose, hallelujah, amen. So tonight, we are citizens from We've come from different backgrounds, different places, different parts of the city to this public place, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But this public place is not the church. You are the church. Amen. We're citizens from heaven meeting together on earth. Think about that. We're citizens from heaven meeting together on earth. And really, this is very important meeting time, right? It's a very important meeting time. Because this is where we come together, the body of Christ, to hear from the Lord. And we get our instructions, our direction. Hallelujah. And, and God comes and ministers to us. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Where there are two or three gathered in my name, he's with us. Amen. Well, let's go to Matthew. Matthew is our foundational class. Hallelujah. Our foundational scripture, excuse me. Praise God. Aren't you excited to be in the house of God tonight? Hallelujah. I'm excited. Praise God. Go with me to Matthew, the 16th chapter. And uh, again, we find Peter, Peter got revelation uh, about what he says here, Matthew 16, um, 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the anointed one. You're the Christus, the anointed one. Hallelujah. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. This is, this is getting revelation right here. God reveals to us things from heaven as we get into that word, hallelujah. Remember, it is, it is a revelation to you, but it's been in the Bible, hallelujah, amen. He just revealed it to us by us getting, giving him the opportunity, hallelujah, amen. And then he says, and I say also unto thee. That thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I want you to say it with me. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Take, take comfort in that. Take comfort in that. We're people, citizens uh, from heaven meeting together on earth, and he's building us up, hallelujah, amen. And he says, that, and, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, amen. So in other words, we're standing upon what the word of God says. Say with me, amen. So who do people say Jesus is, really? Uh, they say, well, you know, he, he, he's just a prophet along with Muhammad. No, 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 hallelujah. We know who he is, right? Jesus is the anointed one. He is the anointed one. Hallelujah. Amen. And there's only one way to have to God. It is through Jesus Christ. He is the Christ, the anointed one. Amen. The son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so we love that. Hallelujah. Amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, years ago, my pastor taught on this for years and for one year. <laughs> and it was quite interesting because we knew exactly where he was going to go, right? But we didn't realize the impact that it would give us, those that were there that night. Now, I want you to know something. That night, uh, or that, that year, it, it literally uh, catapulted me and Pastor Christine into a different realm of understanding the church. You see what I'm saying? But, but I really believe it's because we, got, we gave time for the Word, and the Word revealed to us some wonderful promises. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter. Amen. We're taking our seat of authority in these days. Hallelujah. And in fact, uh, it's exciting 
that the anointing is increasing in us. Say with me, it's in, increasing in us. It's increasing in the church. Not only this church, but it's increasing in the body. The anointing, because God has work for us to do. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 9. The Bible says, for we are labors together with God. <laughs> Think about that. We are labors together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. We are part of his building. Uh, so in other words, we're living stones. We're lively stones. You're a living stone. When, when Jesus came into your heart, you became a living stone, a lively stone. You're, dead. you're not dead any longer, hallelujah. And man, you're living, you're living, you're living, you're living. You'll live forever, hallelujah, amen. So in other words, uh, the unsaved, and I want you to think about this, the unsaved are not living stones. They can be living stones, and they can be uh, uh, wonderful material for God. But they got to get saved. There are a lot of wonderful people that are not born again, but they, they will give you the back off, they'll give you the shirt off their back, right? But if they'll get saved, think about what God can do for them. How, think about what they can do for the kingdom of God. So think about this. When you see people that are unsaved, they're literally futuristic building material for the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says in the Good News Bible, that same scripture. It says, for we are partakers working together for God. Hallelujah, amen. Working together for God. You are God's field. You are God's building. Say with me, I'm God's building. Hallelujah, amen. We're God's building, amen, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah, amen. Now notice this. Go with me to the sixth chapter of 2 Corinthians, amen? And again, I'm not going to move, D, so come on up here, hallelujah, amen? 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, hallelujah. The sixth chapter in 2 Corinthians, praise God, say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. The sixth chapter, verses one, the Bible says this, we then... As workers, are you with me? We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Let me read to you from the Good News Bible. In our work together with God, then we beg you, you who have received God's grace, not to let it be wasted. And notice this, I want you to look at this for a moment. Let the grace that you receive from God, that he is working in you not to be wasted. Now notice this, uh, it's quite interesting. You may be saying, well, well there's so much that, uh, that I don't really know what God wants me to do. Well, first of all, understand something, you have a gift. You have a, you're part of a building of this awesomeness of God. So in other words, simply because we are not in that place by understanding, we have to know we're by, in that place by faith, knowing that we're not going to waste what I'm doing in the things of God. Amen? Hallelujah? You know, when I think about that, think about this. How many people today, now, now, now let's, let's look at it this, in this sense, in this light. How many people today that uh, love the Lord that have talents that really can benefit the kingdom of God are not in a local church. Think about that right now. How many, how many, you may know people, I know people, in fact, I know very close people that, that are not in church. They have talent, they have, they have an anointing, they can be in a house of God serving. This is where that scripture is. In our working together with God, then we beg you, say we beg you. You have received God's grace not to let it be wasted. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, all of us are living stones unto God. We're lively stones unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. We form the body which he is the head. Tonight, we are the body coming together, listening to the head 
speaking through scripture through the anointing of god Hallelujah. amen i love that about god amen so we're the called ones look at your neighbor and say you're called we're the called ones amen we answer the call thank god that you answered the call tonight hallelujah thank god that you gave jesus the lord of your life hallelujah amen thank god that someone prayed for you and you had enough a uh, Holy Ghost to get on you to get, give your life to Jesus. And, and you got a hold of Jesus. Your life has never been the same. And you're called. You're chosen. You're chosen. Hallelujah. Amen. And not everyone answers the call. God's calling everyone, but not everybody answers the call. When he calls, listen, when he calls, we come. Amen. I want you to think about it. here you're in a field of, of nothing but beautiful sheep. Right? Beautiful sheep. Have you ever studied sheep? You that know wildlife or animals. It's amazing. Sheep are really funny if you look at them. Funny, funny, funny. Amen. And so when, when, when a shepherd gets out to the field or calls them or does a certain calling or a yodel or whatever, it's amazing. They all look at each other and then they run all together. But it's always taking one that's going to lead and then the rest follow. It's amazing, right? So we're the called. We're like those sheep. We answer the call. He's calling us to feed us. He's calling us to take care of us. He's calling us to protect us. He's calling us to, to, to keep, to keep our, our lives, or, or if we're injured, or to keep our wounds clean. Hallelujah. Now, but notice this, not everybody wants to be part of that fold. Not because they choose not to, they just don't understand it. There are a lot of born-again believers that are not in a fold. They're not under a shepherd. They're not under, they're not in the, the atmosphere of other believers. Because for some reason or not, they think, I don't know, maybe they don't understand, or maybe they, something happened along their lives, whatever it may be. But either way, we got to understand something. We're called, we answer the call, and we go to where God calls us. Amen. Now, let's look at Luke. We're, we're going to look at something, and I want you to understand something. Because the world teaches you one way, but the Bible teaches you the other way. Now, I've heard pastors or I've heard preachers teach you completely contrary to what you're going to learn tonight. So I want you to really get, the whole, get a hold of the Word of God and trust the Word of God. Amen. Don't try to figure what others said about that. You just look at the Word. Okay, I believe it. That's the way I'm going to do it. Notice what it says in Luke, the 14th chapter. Now, this, I, 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 this is so beautiful. It, it really makes me see something clearer. The year that I sat under my pastor, I saw so much, and I thank God for that catapult that moved us into a realm of seeing the, the importance of a local church. Amen. Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 16, Jesus said this, Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. And send his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Jesus is saying this. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuses. Jesus is saying this now. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I pray I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And others said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray, have me excused. Then another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the cities and bring in hither the poor the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Verses 23. And the Lord said unto him, now notice what he said. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways, hedges, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Look at that word. I, I, I believe that word compel is... is is, is a strong word here which gives us a command, compel. But notice this. When the, when the body is hindered and there are born-again believers, 
then the work has to be done to bring them back into the fold. Now think about that. But if there are excuses, and there are many, think about it, many excuses that you've encountered, maybe you, had, you thought about, or maybe somewhere along the line you, 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 saw, you, you heard about it. But nevertheless, it's an excuse, Jesus said. Now notice this. Excuses made to the king of kings. I want you to think about that. The body of Christ cannot afford to make excuses because the excuse will delay the plan that God has in the fold and in your personal life. Now notice this. Think about this for a moment. Now, after reading these three excuses, you, you, you think all of them, you know, I can understand being married and being excused, but even that Jesus said that was an excuse. So this tells me something. This tells me something. The body has to be the first thing in life. When you and I get saved, now listen to what I'm going to say, and don't lean into what other people say. Lean into the scripture here. The first thing in your life when you become born again is to get into the body of Jesus. That's the first thing, important thing. Amen? Now notice this. Uh, uh, is it before your family? Now this is where many people got off. They say, remember, your family is first, not in this scripture here. It is God first and then family. The problem with this is if we put family first, then we're kind of not using correctly the scripture that says you have to lay down your life for me, right? And that's where he talked about laying down your life, even your father, your mother, and your sisters, and your brothers. And other. What was he saying? He was not saying to neglect them. He was saying, make me your priority over them. Amen? And then also over business. Over business, people that are in business, people that are in jobs. Now, folks, listen, uh, a lot of times we, we, we tend to look at what's easier. But if we can look at this scripture, we have to look at, Jesus said, there is no excuse, even in your jobs, even in your businesses, even at your work. And then even further, even your property. Now, think about that. Even your property. Now, why would property keep people from church? Well, you have to realize something. There's people that will put up anything before Jesus, right? Now, I, I've, I'm a true believer that if we can use wisdom, God will show us wisdom how to deal with all these secondary to the church. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe God will give us wisdom. There's many times where, where you know, uh, personally, personally, that I told you stories that how we were church first. It was church first. It didn't matter. I mean, we can go visit grandma and grandpa all the way to Austin, Texas, and we might have left on Friday after work, but we were back Saturday night to be in church Sunday morning. And I thought about that. There, a lot of times I would say, but we're leaving a, the country, riding horses and running after chickens and feeding, uh, you know, feeding animals and, and playing and shooting guns. And dad, why do we have to go back? He says, son, we've got to go back to church. Church is important for us, right? And I would get, off, I'd get upset and say, ah, oh, got to go back to church, right? But see, I didn't have revelation of that. And really, if you think about it, now, now, I tell people, when you're on vacation, now notice this, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of loosen some, loosen up, uh, I guess I'm going to put a choke line on some. If it's loosened, that's okay, but I'm going to put a little choke line. When you're out of town, it's always good on a Sunday morning to go find you a church. Uh, now, come on, church, or, or have a devotion with your family around, around the, the, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But, but don't, don't use that excuse, well, I'm on vacation. Well, why are you vacationing from the things of God? That's the best time to go to church is to go. That's the opportunity you got to, to, to go visit another church while you're on vacation in another state, another country, amen? So what are you doing? You're, you're, you're putting God first on everything. I've noticed as a pastor, when people go on vacation, now, now, I want you to think about this. When people go on vacation, they come back exhausted. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever been on vacation and come back, oh, I'm so exhausted. I just, oh gosh, I need another vacation from the vacation, right? But, but it's amazing as a pastor, I realize that people, they really are exhausted when they come back from vacation because now we, the church feels the effect of the, exhaust, the exhaustion. 
Come on, church, amen. So in other words, when you're on vacation, you're putting God first and you're having your devotion. So when you get back, you're coming refreshed, ready to be. Say, Pastor, I'm back again. To, come on, we're going to worship God and we're going to go higher with God. Amen. Instead of Pastor trying to get him out of the pit on Sunday morning. Get him out of the pit. Come on, church. Amen. As my pastor used to say, boy, there you go again. Go on a vacation. I tell you what, I hope they come back prayed up. Amen. And so that's, that's true, right? People who are available are chosen people, amen? So remember, we're chosen, God called us, so we put the church first in our assignment, amen? Now go with me to John, the 15th chapter, verses 16, and I'm gonna read it to you from the NLT. Now, this particular scripture, the Lord put it in my heart, and it was just, it was just echoing in my spirit as, as I got the Bible, to read it one day uh, at my dining room table in Texas. And this was, this, this just echoed. And every time I see it, I remember that particular day. Amen. Now, let me read it to you from the NLT. Jesus said this. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Are you with me? Now, notice what it says. I appointed you to go. And produce lasting fruit so that the father will give you whatever you ask for using my name now notice this isn't it amazing that it, it's it's twofold here in other words if you produce fruit simply because you're called and we're all called we're chosen by God if you produce fruit then your father will give you whatever you ask now, I think this is the most important key of lack or of a person's life that's lacking because they're not doing what God has called them to do in their life. Come on, church. In other words, uh, we're, we're all chosen by God. We all have different parts in the body of Christ to fulfill. All of us, not one. There's not one that says, Pastor, I'm... I'm, I'm exempt from that. I'm exempt because the Bible says I'm exempt. Well, I don't know where you see that in the Bible. No one's exempt from this. We're all chosen. Say with me, I'm chosen. chosen. Jesus said, you didn't choose me. I chose you and appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit. What is lasting fruit? Fruit that continues maturing and producing hallelujah that's, that's that's producing disciples that's producing people that's producing harvest for jesus amen and so this is why prayers are hindered because we're not busy about the father's business now i've noticed all the time i've noticed all the time that when one gets saved from someone that led somebody to the lord that person is literally so on fire for God that it, that person now wants to go to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. It, it, in other words, there's no stopping that person. Why? Because the floodgate opened in their spirit because of the word that Jesus put in there, and they know that I'm part of the body and, and I've got to get some building material for the kingdom of God. And then those are the people I've examined. Those are the people that God blesses even greater and greater ways. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about that. Hallelujah. Amen. A good friend of mine that is a, that is a, a, a uh, was a stand-in for, um, oh gosh, I just went, for a, a Hollywood actor. And uh, he looks just like him. Looks just like him. And now he makes movies in Los Angeles and he's an evangelist. And now he's on, a, on, on a Victory Channel. His name is Rick and Nettie Reina. Wonderful, beautiful couple that we met years ago. And he was saying something so beautiful. He says, you know, um, um, the blessings of God are upon the righteous. And, and he started talking about the blessings on our life. Now notice this. Um, he had bought some property years ago. Uh, and uh, it's, it's to the back of his house. And the property faces a main road, so he needed that property to get to his house so he could park. Um, uh, actually, he, he parked a, a bobtail trailer that he opened up, and he would take it and preach out of it. He, was, he, he would preach, I mean, literally. In fact, uh, he made the movie, the rally movie, and Kenneth Copeland was in it. 
How many people saw that movie? It's a more powerful rally movie. Anyway, a good friend of ours. And uh, he, was, he, he was saying that he would take that trailer and preach the gospel and, and preach the gospel and people get saved. So he, pulled, he, he bought that property to pull in his truck. Well, it wasn't until years later that someone came to his door and wanted to buy that property. And he said, no, I'm not going to sell it. And then the same person came and he says, no, I'm not going to sell it. And then the same person came and he sold it for almost two something million dollars. Just like that, right? And so he's talking about the blessings of God, how they operate. And he said something. He said, I believe that happened because my truck was being parked and that was an evangelistic outreach tool. And now the Lord blessed us with property, a beautiful home. And he has a beautiful home, beautiful property. And, and, and just now he's on, 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 on a victory channel and making great movies and having rallies in, in Los Angeles, California. But he kind of stirred me about something. And this is a scripture that, he, that, that I believe stirred my heart when I read this. Listen to this. You did not choose me. I chose you. Appointed you. Go and produce lasting fruit so that your father will give you whatever you ask using my name. That's powerful, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I believe we need to pray for divine appointments every day. Wake up every morning with divine appointments. Get your wallet, your purse full of business cards, and get ready to do the harvest. This is, this is the time for harvest time. This is the time that God's going to start stirring up the church, stirring up the people. Before he comes, we're going to fill the nets for the kingdom of God. Amen. Go meet to 1 Corinthians. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you with me, church? 1 Corinthians, hallelujah, amen. This week alone, Pastor Christine and I passed out almost seven or eight cards uh, uh, just in a couple of days, just amazing, asking for divine appointments, and all of a sudden God they started putting us in the right place. I, I, I believe that's going to be the key that we're going to have to move in these days. 1 Corinthians, uh, the first chapter, are you with me? Hallelujah, amen. Uh, hallelujah. Listen to what it says, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses... Well, let's read verse 1. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the, through the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother. Notice what he says. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus our Lord, be theirs and ours. Now notice this, look at this, the calling, the anointing that's on you to be called saints, but notice what he says, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, be theirs and ours. Folks, what is he saying? Saints among the church, saints among us are called saints. And anything that happens, God sets you up so that it can be yours and ours. There's something about that. Come on, church. Remember, we're built upon a rock, which is Jesus Christ. It's an immovable. This is not like Amway. This is not like, like uh, whatever other thing that you're trying to sell and trying to do, do a, a pyramid thing. That last one day gets excited and last one day and that's it. You forget about it. Come on, church. It, it's, it's, this is solid. This is solid. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Can you say amen? This is solid all the way. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Now look at the same uh, chapter, verses 9 now. He called you saints because you're called. Verses 9. God, who is faithful by whom you were called. Underline that called there. Called. Not only were you called saints, but you're called unto the fellowship. That's koinonia. Remember we talked about koinonia. Fellowship of his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. In other words, you're, you're having a continual relationship with Jesus because you're called Come on, a continued relationship. Think about that. Constantly the anointing on you all day long to do the work of the Lord. All day long as you go about your day. All day long. See, it's just not a, it's just not a Wednesday and a Sunday night thing. It's an all week long thing throughout your day. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read it to you from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 9. And the Good News Bible says this. God is to be trusted. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, Good News Bible. God is to be trusted. The God who called you 
to have fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So in other words, just trust the Lord. Amen. Trust him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now quickly go with me to Hebrews. Hallelujah. Praise God. We trust the Lord. We believe the Lord. We stand on the word of God. And we know that all things work for good. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen. So in other words, praise God. I'm so excited about the word. Uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Let's look. There's so much here, but uh, let's look at uh, verses. Oh, my goodness. There's so much here. Thank you, Lord. Verses 22. Hallelujah. Amen. But you are come unto my Mount Zion or Zion. Whenever you see that word Zion, uh, physically, literal, it's talking about Israel, but also today it's talking about the church. Now remember something, church, Israel and the church. It's not pushing away Israel, it's, it's, it's Israel and the church, amen. But you are coming to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable company of angels. Now this is what I want you to see. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. Jesus, church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just made, or just men made perfect. Now right there is just a, f that scripture there just talks about so much of our future, so much of who we are. So much of what God is counting on us here on earth. Remember, we're citizens from heaven meeting here on earth. We're temporary here. We're moving somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. In the near future, we're going somewhere. But until then, we're chosen here on earth to do a mighty work. But now, we, the church, are moving into this realm that God calls them. But notice this. Our names are written in the book of life. Think about that. We're members of his church. If, if your name is written in the book of life, then you better get busy in the local church. You got to be busy in the body of Christ. Come on, church. Amen. Because, see, I believe if, now, notice this, notice this. According to Scripture, if we're not involved or being part of his body, then we could have a chance of removing our name from the book of life. Now, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, listen, if I quit going to church as a believer and I'm getting my study only by myself or what I'm hearing or that, what if someone moves me a little, maybe an inch to the left, and then the next person moves me to the left, then the next person moves me to the left. Now, this is what's happened to many people. They're far away from the Word of God now, right? And what happens if, when Jesus comes? What happens? That's why it's so important for us to get back to the word, get back to what he says, literally what he says about who we are in the church, the body of Christ. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. It's so important. I thank God for that. I thank God. It's an ark of safety. The, the body of Christ is an ark of safety. We've come together to hear the Lord. We've come together to study the word. We mean business when we gather. Come on, church. Can you say amen? When we get together, we mean business. Come on, church. We mean business. God, we want to hear you. We want to worship you. We want, we want by faith to, to, to receive all that you have for us. There, there's no playing around when I go to church. No playing around. I'm not going to church to look at your boots. I'm not going to church to look, to look at who, how you dress. I'm not going to church to, just to waste my time or to please mom and daddy or sister or brother or whatever or father. I'm going to church because I need to be there. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our names are written in that book. Say with me, amen. Amen. See, citizens from heaven, you are permanent part of his building. His church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Look at Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 22. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited that you're part of the body? Yes. Amen. Now, notice what it says in, in verses 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water 
Now, now think about that. Verses 23, let us hold fast the profession of faith. That's a confession. Without wavering, for he's faithful, that promise. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now look at verses 22 again. Let us. Let us. You know what that means? Literally, what you can do. Let us is what I can do, what we can do. Let us, let us all together, what we can do, draw near with a true heart. Draw near where? Draw near where? To the head, to the body, to, to, to Jesus Christ. Come on, the house of God. Let us come near with a true heart. True, true, true. I mean, literally true. No, 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 no. How can I tell you? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the opposite of, of, of true? Fake. False. Right? I'm coming to church truthfully. I need Jesus. I, I was getting ready today, and I was so excited. I said, oh, God, I, I thank you. That, I thank you that we have a place to go worship you. We come together. The body is going to be there today. Oh, God, thank you for the body coming together. Thank you, all of us, for coming together. Let us draw. Let us, let us, let us, uh, with a full assurance of faith, knowing, man, I'm assured by the word of God, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Folks, what does that mean? Constantly in the word and letting the word wash us from any conscience of evil. Amen? Because see, they're, they're, we live in a world that, I mean, literally everything around us is hurting. Everything out there is awful. Everything out there, you see this, you hear that, you look at this. And, and, and you know, I don't know if you heard the statistics that, the, that came out today, came out today. One out of uh, 179 people will be murdered. And I canceled that. I said, no, in Jesus' name it will. not well, They come out with this 100 out of 179 will be murdered because the escalations of murder in, 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 these, in, in our country. We have more murders this year alone than we ever had in years and years. Think about it. My, ho my home state where, where I was born, I was born in Chicago, Illinois, in Blue Island, Illinois, a, a, a suburb of Chicago. Uh, listen, folks, that place there, murder every night, every night, every night, murders, 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 murders every night. Literally. So what's happening? Now notice this. Tells me that the world is getting darker, but the anointing is increasing in the church. The anointing is increasing in us. Think about that. Hallelujah. Amen. I can tell you a story about, about Jesse Duplantis when he went to New York, when he went with, uh, with uh, um, um, Dave Wilkerson. Dave Wilkerson was, was pastor in New York. You've heard the story about Dave Wilkerson, how he led many gang members. So Jesse Duplantis went out there. And, and Jesse said that they put a, they put a trailer out on the road and, and Jesse got up there preaching and, and Dave Wilkerson. But, but Jesse was preaching and Dave Wilkerson walked out to the, where the guys were and the guys literally pulled out a gun and literally pulled the trigger on David Wilkerson as he was inviting him to the, get closer. And Jesse was on the stage and he heard the gun go off, boom, 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 and it didn't touch David Wilkerson. He said, I saw miracles right before me, right when I'm going to preach. David Wilkerson went out there, and they wanted to kill him. They wanted to assassinate him, right? And not one bullet. Uh, think about uh, uh, um, uh, Hagee, Pastor Hagee in San Antonio. Uh, he was preaching, and, and a gunman walked into the church, uh, literally close to the pulpit, pulled a gun, and, and shot three times. Didn't touch him one thing. Think about And, of course, his bodyguards or the ushers jumped him, right? But I want you to think about things like this. What's, why, why does that happen? The anointing of God. Think about the anointing of God. I remember years ago, we went to a Mexican restaurant, and to get a good Mexican restaurant in anywhere, you got to go to the south side, anywhere. Even Oklahoma, south side. You got to go to the south side, right? So we went to the south side in Houston, Texas, and that's, 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 that's gangbanger area, right? But it was good food. Oh, I'll never forget it. And so we had a young girl, um, a young girl that lived with us, and, and, and uh, so we went out to eat. And all of a sudden, uh, we're talking, and she's, uh, she's facing the glass. There's a big window by the restaurant, and I'm sitting over here, Pastor Christine's sitting over here. And all of a sudden, her, 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 her um, fork and spoon 
vibrated and fell on the ground. The moment she reached down to get it, bam, a bullet came through that window and literally, well, actually just hit that wall and we saw it, but the bullet did not shatter the glass, but it literally broke the glass. It was a pretty thick glass. When she got up, her head was right there. That's, that's powerful. I tell you, I shook. And I told that girl, girl, the anointing of God protected you just right now. That, that, I tell you, this is God because who kicked, who vibrated? Literally, that thing vibrated. It's like maybe a big truck passed by. But, but you know, that's what they say. But I know an angel did that. And all of a sudden just fell and she reached down and boom. I'm telling you, folks, this is the anointing of God upon the people of God. Amen. And so listen to what it says in verses, in verses uh, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Now let me read it from, to you from the, uh, well, no, no, I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, let us uh, is really what can you do, what can we do. Uh, there's no comparison to what we can do together in the body of Christ. We're doing it together. We're doing it together. Hallelujah. Think about, think about what all of us coming with one emphasis is to, to glorify God and, and to build up and to edify God and to move into a realm of a higher glory. Come on, church. All of us coming to church and desiring for the moves of God, desiring for moves of the holiness of God and healings to come. Think about what's going to happen to a church that starts believing that way. Instead of coming with things of the past and the hurts and this and that. And, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, literally, you can, your mind can drift in church. I know what I'm talking about. It can drift. My daddy, uh, he used to, used to tell me years ago, and it happened to me, when he would go pray, it, it, he, his mind started drifting. And I told him, Dad, it happens to me too. What do you do? He said, pray louder in the Holy Spirit when your mind starts drifting. Just pray louder and louder and louder. So I understood something. When people play loud, that's what they're doing. They're playing loud so they can focus on, on staying with it. Hallelujah. Come on. Sometimes you just drift about what am I going to eat after church? Oh, no, 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 no. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, tomorrow I got Oh, no, no, I rebuke that. I'm in church right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So in other words, we'll do it together. I want you to think about that. The devil tries to separate you. But remember, we can do all things with him. We come with faith. We come with resources. We come with talents. We come with anointings. And we come with abilities. Come on, church, can you say amen? Now, let's, let's close with 1 first, first John. Hallelujah, amen. So I'm part of the body of Christ. You're part of the body of Christ. Come on, church. Jesus is the head, hallelujah, amen. He's the head, hallelujah, amen. 1 John 1. Oh, uh, John is, is a pastor. He's, John is a love, love disciple the one that was sent to Patmos, and they try to burn him in bowl and oil. He's the one that loved Jesus. They all love Jesus, but he's the one that literally just was a young boy with Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. 1 John 1, it says that, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, we have looked upon in our hands, have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. And notice what it says in verse 3. This which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. Notice this, the joy. I think that's really what gives us so much hope, is that we believe what they saw. We believe what they heard. We believe what they touched. We believe what they wrote. We believe it, what the Holy Ghost is telling us now. We believe it's, it's living, it's, live, it's lively. We believe it. And our joy is fulfilled because of this. Amen. I, I believe unhappiness is because they don't have the joy of the word. You know, a lot of times, personally, personally, 
when, when you have opportunity to, to feel a little down or something, I have to reach for the word. Immediately, it just lifts my spirit up. Now, now yeah, yeah, we pray in the Holy Ghost, but we have all opportunities. We have opportunities to, to feel uh, the pains, the hurts and stuff. And, but we have to know that we, we have to get into that word right away. So I think about people that don't have that opportunity that are live, li, li, living every day upset, living every day worried, living every day fearful, living every day. I mean, think about it. You get up in the morning and you do the same thing over and over and over. There's no hope. There's no word. There's no love for Jesus. There, there's no Jesus. There's no body. There's, they're just living a cycle. Uh, folks, listen, that cycle it, one day is going to stop. And where it stops, it's going to be determined where you're going to spend eternity. You see what I'm saying? I'd rather put in my cycle Jesus so that I can be happy as I go about my day, as I go about this, so that I have security in my future. Amen. Let's stand up, church. Amen. And tonight, uh, let, let's just focus on we're part of that body, not the building, uh, him, Jesus. And, he, and he's building us up, making us um, strong and tall into his full stature. Father, we come to you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we receive the anointing today of these scriptures. Father, they have spoken to us deep. They have ministered to us in our heart, and we, 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 don't, we don't lose them, Lord. We, we keep them always sharp, always visible, always reiterating in us, Lord. Every time the enemy tries to hinder us from the body, every time the enemy tries to uh, divide or, or, or upset or, or, or break or whatever it may be, Lord, whatever it may be. We know his work is to destroy your body. But we're not going to let him, Lord, because we know, each of us know who we are. We're, we're connected. Lord, like that mighty Holy Ghost chain linked together, linked together. The chain is strong as long as every link is strong in itself, Lord Jesus. What breaks a chain is a weak link. And Lord, we choose to be strong today, Lord, by your word. And every day, Lord, to, and Lord, every day as we come, Lord, we come to the house of God to minister to one another, to encourage one another, Lord, to draw strength from one another, to bring the supply of the Spirit together, Lord, to form a, a strong, uh, united plan that you have for us, God, to hear from heaven, Lord Jesus, what you want us to say, what you want us to hear. And Father, we thank you that we're citizens from heaven meeting here on earth in this place together, Lord, along with other bodies, along with other churches. Lord, thank you for those that are meeting tonight and, Lord, are preaching the word and are excited for the word. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for those, Jesus, that are not in the house of God. Father, I pray, Father, for such a strong awakening Awakening, an awakening that their eyes will open, Jesus, that they may know what their hope is. They may just hook up, Lord Jesus, leave, leave the, 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 the pain or the, the, the distractions or the confusion, whatever they've been taught, Lord Jesus, that they leave it and say, no, i got to get back to the Word. The Word says it. And Lord, you said that our joy may be full. There's joy being part of the body. There's joy in the house of God. There's joy in the presence of God. There's joy, Lord Jesus. And Lord, when we pray, Lord, our prayers are answered. When we pray, our prayers are answered. Lord, because we are causing fruit that the fruit may remain. Jesus, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. And we pray for all those building materials that are out there, Lord, that are just waiting for us to Say the word, waiting for us to say the word. Holy Ghost, you're stirring them. Angels, you're preparing them, but you're waiting. Jesus, you said, open our eyes, for the harvest is white. Jesus, you said for us to pray for labors, or that you may send labors into the field, Lord Jesus. We pray. Father, we pray. And Lord, I pray for many people to come into your kingdom. This, this, before the end of this year, Lord Jesus, we pray. As Christmas comes around, Thanksgiving and Christmas, Lord, we pray for souls to get saved. Lord, I'm believing for many souls to get saved, Lord. And use us evangelistically, Lord, as we go. 
As we leave this meeting tonight, use us, Lord. Give us divine appointments, Lord. Let it start tonight. Let it start tonight. Let us keep our, our antennas tuned up, Lord. Let us have our eyes open. Every person, every person that we encounter, we ask you, Lord, do we plant? Do we sow? Do we water? What is it, Lord? Do we do the increase? You tell us, Lord. And Father, we do it in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, amen and amen. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.